So again, good afternoon, everyone. No? Shine and sparkle. Excited with the topics. Thank you so much. Yes, exciting talaga. So ito ang programa natin for today. So uh, let me just elaborate on the house rules first and foremost. Second, we'll, we'll jump right into our topic proper. We have uh, Adrian Fajardo and Denise Castro to discuss the framework on establishing strong online presence. After that, we have Ms. Pau Guevara to discuss um, basic product photography. We have Ms. Moon, uh, Moon Danipog. She will be the one for the basic copy, copywriting. And of course, our very own Ms. Mina Akram for the basic graphic design. So yan ang mga topics natin for today. It will last from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. So hold on to your seats. No? Uh, medyo matagal tayo, but we promise we will make it worth your while. Next slide, please. House rules. Again, uh, those who were here last week, nakita niyo to, but I would just like to reiterate. First, uh, if you can mute your microphones and be mindful of the background noise. And also turn on your cameras if you can and position your cameras properly. Uh, there will be open forums after each topic where you can ask questions. And then click the raise hand to queue in for questions. Uh, you may input in your thoughts, comments, and questions in the chat box if you don't have a microphone. Uh, you may use either Filipino or English mm -hmm. when you type in your comments or questions. Mm -hmm. uh, limit distractions as much as possible and pay attention. You know, um, put your cell phones muna on the side. And mm -hmm. of course, most importantly, we would like for you to enjoy and maximize this webinar. So those are simple house rules for today's masterclass. Um, I'd like to call on now my colleague, Janet, to introduce our... Ay, sorry, di pa pala. Um, just a reiteration of our masterclass schedule. So for next week, uh, next Saturday, we will have the financial management for micro and small businesses. Napaka-importante po nito, no? Yung pag-manage ng ating mga uh, usaping pinansyal. Lahat, hindi lahat, mar, uh, yung bookkeeping, importante po yan. So uh, that will be for next week. It's 1 to 3 p.m. For May 1, ating Labor Day. Tentative time is from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. 12 noon, so it will be all about opportunity discovery. And our um, guest speaker is none other than Miss Bridget Angler from the Swinburne University of Technology. So, imported po ang ating speaker on Labor Day. And last but not the least, our culminating activity, culminating masterclass will be on May 8th. Uh, the Live Local PH Combination is a graduation uh, day for everyone. So, we would of course, like to invite all our uh, Live Local PH participants to this um, last masterclass uh, schedule. Uh, see, Ambassador Stephen Robinson will be there, and also we will have um, a lot in store for you. We will have a panel of entrepreneurs for this day. So, ito na yung parang pinakabonggang masterclass natin. Okay, so thank you. Um, if you have any questions, you may just type it in the chat box. I'd like now to call on um, my colleague, Janet to introduce our next speakers for today's masterclass. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, so good afternoon again, everyone. Um, we are privileged to have uh, two very young and bright minds uh, with us uh, this afternoon, uh, who will be discussing about uh, how to establish a strong uh, online presence or social media presence. Um, so we first have, so we have, they will be uh, conducting the session um, together. So first we have Adrian Fardo. So Adrian is, a growth, is the growth director of Bullish Launch Agency. So Adrian's passion lies in helping businesses fuel their growth. As growth director of Bullish, he has worked with brands like Maria Health, Cravewell, and Camiseta to craft their distinct tone and branding, maximize their social media channels, and optimize their paid ad strategy. Then we also have Denise Castro. Uh, Denise is currently the brand head of Snail White Philippines. So Denise is a brand builder by heart. She has worked with challenger consumer brands like Tresemme of Unilever and Snail White. On the side, she also helps small to medium local businesses with their marketing strategies. So. I'll now hand the. Um, I'll I'll now turn over to Adrian and Denise. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Good afternoon. So for today, um, let you let me just share our screen. There. 
Can everyone see the screen? Yes, well, so far, yes. Okay, perfect. So, kindly let us know if our audio is breaking up or if the screen suddenly disappears along the way. But just like what Janet said, um, Denise and I are here today to really talk about establishing a strong foundation on social media. So really, it all boils down to, for today's session, it's really all about trying to create an effective and relevant um, content online. So now, I understand that Denise sent over some modules, so modules 2 and modules 3 online, with also about discussing these two important concepts. So module 2 was really talking about more on content bucket, establishing a strong media uh, online presence, and then the module 3 was really more about metrics, and analyzing whether you know your brand is performing well and good, and we believe that you know both are the same, um, are very important sides of the coin, and therefore that's the reason why we also wanted to um, combine the sessions together. So just to have, give a quick um, idea on how today's session would go about, um, it will really be um, broken down into four parts. So on the first part, um, we're just gonna give a quick refresher on the slides that we've sent over. Um, from the last week. So that will be handled by Dini. So she'll talk about the important things and important key takeaways um, from modules two and three. And then second, given that we really want it to be more practical in terms of application, um, the second part will be me talking about a case study. So we'll talk about hypothetical state uh, case study, Tori Q. So we'll explain the brand, the business model, and the social goal. And then three, after talking about the theory and also applying it to practice in a case study, um, we'll now open the forum for questions and answers if you have any questions or clarifications regarding the concepts and the uh, um, abilities of, that will be discussed. And then finally, um, given that we also want this to be a dynamic session, um, we were hoping that we could also apply the lessons we've learned together this afternoon to your own business. So as we discussed, so the second and the, the first and second part, we also want you to take note and answer this mini checklist. So after the Q&A, we'll also give you a couple of minutes to really th um, answer these questions together. So number one, we uh, just for so that for the, the group will also understand the business context, um, kindly list down what's your business, what's the USP, or what do you want to, it to be known for, the business or the project that you're working on. And then particularly in terms of the session today, what would be your business objective? What would be your social goal? And then um, other key important things that we also want you to um, figure out would be who are your competitors? What would be your content buckets? And what metrics uh, do you want to measure? So don't worry. Um, the reason why we also front-loaded this question is that so that you have a copy yourselves and then we can answer together as we discuss both the theory and the case. So without further ado, I'll turn you over to Denise to talk more about the quick refresher on both modules that we sent. All right, so before we actually go into practical application of the two modules, um, we wanted first to take a step back and then review lang, um, the key takeaways from the two modules, which are establishing so strong social media presence and then monitoring or measuring your performance on social media. So um, first, parang, um, in establishing your social media presence, I tried to break it up into three steps. So you have first, you have to conduct a social media audit. Um, so basically this is about, um, like I mentioned in the module, like looking outside and also looking within, looking at your existing social media um, um, activity, um, evaluating it, um, also looking at your audience. So who are your target market? Um, and then who are the people that are currently viewing your social media pages. Um, next is also to um, look at your comp competitors naman. So after you um, do that, so like with any research project, diba, that's the first step, it's for you to gather all your data. Um, after you get that, condense your learnings and then get your key takeaways. Um, that's when you establish your social media voice and tone. Um, We'll look at several ways that um, for you to establish a really strong tone. Um, and this can be done in several ways. So in the type of content that you post, um, your captions, um, even your visual elements, although we won't be going into the visual part of it um, for this session. Next is for you to craft your content bucket. So what are the type of content that you will post? Um, what's your posting schedule or frequency? So in conducting a social media audit, um, first, you need to evaluate your current efforts. So if you're already using your social media tools, um, 
like for example, I'm sure some of your businesses would already have Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can just take a step back and look at what you've already accomplished. So um, look at how many followers you already have. Um, look at the like profile of your followers. And then ask yourself the following question. So what's working? What's not working? And who are you talking to on your social media effort? Um, the next step is for you to create your audience persona. So um, as with any business, it's very important that you first um, look at your target market, right? And in social media, you also have a market that is listening to you on social media. And you, usually you'd be able to find their profile on the inside tab of Facebook or Instagram. So you'd be able to see, um, you'd be able to see, kung, see like the age range of the people that are following you, the majority, the split of the genders so that are following you. Um, sometimes they'll even show like what kind of interests your follow existing followers have. And then basically what you do is you put that up against your target market, your business target market, because um, it's not always um, the same. Sometimes your target market, for example, would be um, millennials, working class millennials who have purchasing power. But then you look at the people that are actually viewing your content on social media and then you discover that um, you're targeting pala teenagers who don't have purchasing power. So parang, that from there, that's when you evaluate. Maybe, ah, there's pala an existing audience like that that I can tap. Or maybe you can even pivot your social media to tap more of the target market that you think would work for you better. Next would be um, conducting a competitive analysis. So um, I'll go, uh, I think there's a slide for that just to summarize like the things that you should look at. But it's very important that you look at your competitors as well because that's your best benchmark for how your business is doing. Um, that's how you can sort of come up with a game plan um, to maybe um, either like steal some of their um, customers or be, maybe just um, look for good pegs for your own content. So um, here are just some questions that you can look at when you're looking at your social media audience. And it's very important because if you don't know who your audience is, you can't really give them what they want. Um, and they won't give you what you want, which is um, their business, your, uh, their, their purchase, right? So um, it's very important that you look at all of these from their age, demographics, their interests, their buying behavior, um, from your existing customers. Maybe you can already get a sense of how often they buy if they repurchase. Um, usually, what's the size of their basket? Um, so those are some important things that um, you can look at. Um, getting to know your audience, here are some other things. So um, some other tactics also to consider is for you to um, analyze your existing analytics um, and then test also, look at if you have already paid ads um, for the people that are clicking. Then and, you, and looking at your competitors, which Adrian will also expound on and flesh out later on, you can just summarize, like choose two to three competitors for you to do a deep dive on. Um, look at parang which um, networks, social media networks they're active in. How many um, of them, how many posts do they post per month? How many of those posts are used to promote discounts or sales? Um, how many followers do they have? And what's their audience growth? So how, on average, how many new followers do they get per month? And establishing naman your brand voice and tone, um, it's really all about consistency. So um, how do you become more consistent across social channels? So making sure that your tone is um, the same on Facebook, on Instagram, um, and also creating, for example, captions for your posts. You need to make sure that you're able to talk effectively to your audience. So sometimes because we're business owners, we tend to use terms or words that not everyone may understand. So like, for example, um, especially as marketers, you might drop these words or terms that um, don't naman resonate well with your audience. So in talking, in establishing your brand voice and tone, you need to make sure that um, when people click on the, your posts, they get what they want, they get what they expect. Um, you're able to um, get your message across without sounding too um, out of touch for, from your audience. Next is for you to listen and respond. So it's, both, it's very important, and I think I always say this, that in social media, your role is not just to talk and to keep um, 
putting out content out there, your role is also to listen. So it's also your way to um, listen to your audience, um, hear what they have to say, um, and parang just basically discovering and learning more about them. So it's, it's important that in your social media, you also show that you care about your audience. It's not all about your brand only. Um, next um, would be your content type. So this is, I think, the funner part of doing social media. It's um, picking and choosing what types of content you will post. And there are many ways to, do, to go about this. You can set a schedule, of course frequency of how often you will post and then if if you really like want to take it seriously and really want to take a deeper dive into your social media management you can also assign how many posts will be educational how many will be inspirational how many will be interactive promotional entertaining and the key word here is really balance so we want to try to avoid posting only about sales otherwise you'll be known as a sale driven or promotion driven brand you also want to avoid um, keeping on posting about products only. So you also want to avoid like a very monotonous feed that it's just all of products. You also want to post um, friendly faces, customers, um, feedback. So those are also important things for you to um, attain balance in your feed. Um, another type of content that you should have are, um, I, I would say, interactive posts. So how do you get them to engage with you? So these are some just examples. Um, but, you know, in social media and in content, the sky's the limit. There are a lot of different um, things for you and possibilities for you to post. And now, especially in, in social media, you're not just limited anymore to a photo. You can also post a video. You can even post stories. Um, there are a lot of different um, ways for you to engage your audience. Um, next, the man is for evaluating effectiveness of social media performance. So um, this one is the step two. So after you um, establish your social media um, profile, after you create your content buckets and actually go into posting, how do you then evaluate um, your performance? And it can sometimes be too technical, but thankfully um, on Facebook and Instagram, they already actually provide these metrics for you so you don't have to compute anymore. Um, and where to start? So you always have to determine your social goals. So in determining your social goals, um, there are different ways to go about it. So um, basically, it's trying to, um, parang what are you trying to accomplish or gain through these social media channels? So which channels are most relevant to you? Baka naman not relevant to you ang, um, ang Facebook. Baha pala your audience is mostly on Instagram. It could also be the other way around. Next is for you to create metrics to measure these goals. So based on these goals, what are your KPIs? And then, of course, measuring, monitoring, reporting, and then lastly, optimizing, so testing and learning. Sorry. Okay. So in determining your social goals, there are several um, just um, objectives that you can do. So um, choose to focus on. So first is awareness. Um, how do you increase eyeballs? So this is basically parang, um, how do you make sure that the content that you produce reaches as many people as you want, right? Engagement naman is how do you make sure that the people that are reached are actually meaningful customers and the way they interact with you um, are through meaningful ways. Sometimes um, if you really broaden your reach, sometimes the quality of your audience decreases. Eh? Like um, not all of them could pala are potential customers. Sometimes it's better then um, to really have a narrower audience trend so that um, you can make sure that they're really targeted for your brand. Lastly is conversion. So how do you increase your leads, your sales? Um, if, if you're a brand that um, is selling products, how do you increase your customers. Maybe if you've been in the business already for several years, how do you naman make sure that people repurchase or increase their basket size? So there are a lot of different um, ways then to measure conversion. Then for Infinity, it's all about increasing loyalty. So basically, um, from your previous customers, how many of them um, have become loyal customers? How many repurchase? How many of them post about you um, on their own social media pages? So here, just a summary of all of that. Um, in connecting your business objectives and goals, it's very important 
um, that as a business, you also have your own objective. And from there, only then can you determine your social media goal. Um, it shouldn't be the other way around. Na unahin mo muna yung, oh, I want to reach this many followers. It all Your goal always has to be connected to your actual um, business objective. Um, so, like, uh, for example, if your goal is to grow the brand, um, then in, in social media, your first goal would be to increase your awareness. If you want to turn your customers into or your followers into advocates, then your goal would be engagement. Then if you want to drive retaining existing customers, that would be consumer affinity. So from there, parang, um, you'd be able to uh, prioritize also your goals. So it's not naman al always na parang you have to um, at attain or achieve all these social media goals at the same time, especially if you're a new business. Sometimes, most and most of the time, ang unahin mo talaga would be massive awareness. That's would you, where you would really invest your time, your resources, and your money. And then from once you reach a certain level of awareness, then that's when you can engage them and eventually convert them. If you're a long-run business, maybe your goal would be consum um, consumer affinity naman. So it's not like you always have to choose lang which one to prioritize first. Okay. Okay, then here are just some um, ways to metrics to measure these goals. So um, uh, I, if you want more detail into the actual formulas, um, it's in the module or in that, that, that was sent to you. So you can just check on that. But like I said, most of the time, naman, um, Facebook or Instagram would already provide this to you without you having to compete. So based on your social goals, these are the objectives. Uh, these are the uh, metrics that you can look at. Then lastly, um, optimize. So based on your performance, how can you improve? So if you have poor awareness, um, also need to look at your other investments. So baka naman, um, you're, po you're posting on social media every day, but it's not reaching enough people. Maybe it's a case of lack of um, public relations efforts or paid ads. Um, maybe you need key op opinion leaders also to increase your awareness. And then... Um, for if you have poor engagement, naman, parang how do you um how do you you need to evaluate your content strategy? So basically going back to step one, which is about um looking again at your content buckets. Is it enough and is it sufficient? Is it um really parang speaking to your audience? And also keeping your conversation flowing. Baka naman you're seeing also that Oh, a lot of people are commenting on your posts, but you don't reply to any one of them. So it's also important that you talk to them because that's how you keep them engaged. And lastly, um, conversion. Um, how do you optimize your landing page? So parang, um, if you're, for example, if your business has a website, a brand.com, maybe your landing page is not optimized for conversion. Baka pala the user experience is quite poor. Di alam ng customers saan mag-click, saan pupunta. So sayang lang your effort also in, in making a really great social media post if um, the landing page is not um, great. If some of you are on Lazada or Shopee, you could also optimize the pages there, making sure that the information that the customer would need is already there. And then making sure that your offers are compelling. So um, maybe you can also have seasonal discounts or promotions to make sure that um, you're really pushing the sell out or the conversion. Okay, so now I'll turn you over to Adrian to do a live um, case or business to really flesh out both those concepts. So here. So hi, good afternoon everyone. So again, like what Denise mentioned, um, really the refresher course aim to talk about what would be the key takeaways when it comes to our creating a social, uh, strong foundation on social media. So module two was really more about creating your content and actually having a clear brand identity. And then module three was really how, to, how do you actually assess whether your brand identity or how you're posting is effective. So really module two, you can see that it's really all about creating your content buckets. How do you um, share your brand tone, your brand image? and in the way that you post, um, whether it be on your Facebook, your Instagram, and the like. And then module three is all about assessing whether they're actually performing the way that you want to. So Denise mentioned earlier different kinds of metrics. So you have your awareness metrics, you'll have your engagement metrics. But for the sake of this case study, um, 
given that we're going to be talking about hypothetical um, brand, um, we'll analyze the competitor's metrics instead. So basically, um, the second part will really just be kind of like a step-by-step -step guide on how they actually flesh out those key metrics um, that Denise mentioned earlier. So for today, in trying to come up with like a best case study, um, Denise and I decided that we're going to go with a hypothetical brand that um, um, is revolving around food, so yakitori. So today we're gonna be talking about Tori Q. So basically, it's a brand about they want to be a pioneer in quality Japanese yakitori skewers. Um, so um, for the first part, I'll really be more talking about the brand first, so that we're aligned on what the brand identity is, what their goals might be, who might their competitors be like, and then from there, creating the content bucket from scratch and also um, looking at our um, competitors and then finding the relevant metrics that you want to measure and even assess from month to month or even post to post. So again, we just wanted to introduce you to the brand. So actually, Tori Q is a Singapore brand. So there's an actual Tori Q, but not here in the Philippines. And basically what they sell is that they're a Japanese yakitori and bento boxes. So in terms of um, what they offer, really they offer tastefully marinated and freshly grilled chicken, pork, and beef skewers. So basically how we see it, it's kind of like the Reyes barbecue, um, but in Japan. So very affordable, very delicious, and a lot of people um, love it there. So um, just to give you a, an insight on how the business might look, um, we just wanted to share this very quick video on parang their grilling process, what are the marinades and the skewers that they sell. So I'll just play this very quick. Yeah, so as you can see, they actually have a very cool technology where it's para automated the way they dip um, their uh, yakitori and their skewers in their 30R uh, marinated secret sauce recipe. So, you know, all in all, it's a very fun concept. But then the reason why we're very attracted to it is it's all about whether if we take it from the lens of what if we introduce, introduce this Japanese skewer brand in the Philippines, then we're really going to be building a brand from the ground up. And that's why that's when it's really effective when it comes to talking about your content buckets and also what are the metrics that you want going in. So in terms of the USP, um, really we also have to zone in on what would uh, what would make it special. And really we um, listed that as two three things. So it's all about the delicious and consistent taste because of their yakitori secret sauce. It's because of their fast service because again looking at that video they had a very cool griller. And then three, um, it's very affordable and filling as a meal. So in order to make it more relevant to us or parang mas madaling i-imagine in the Philippine context, we tried to look for um, certain competitor pegs or parang inspiration brands that we really wanted to look up to. Because again, as you know, a growing um, startup or even a, a SME, really what you want to have is aspirational brands that you want to benchmark against with. And for this um, hypothetical case study, we decided that in terms of parang snacks that everyone loves, then you know a good benchmark would be Turks. So um, I'm pretty sure most of us have heard Turks and you know or ordered one. So right now there are currently around 498 outlets, um, and you know um, really all they offer are pita donors. So a Turkish dish made of 100% tender juicy minced beef. So the reason why we chose Turks as a competitor, even though they're not really a Japanese, is that the idea is the same. Na, you know, um, the, it's a shawarma, so a foreign dish that's turned into an affordable snack for Filipinos. So very similar to what we want to do. So, but instead of shawarma, it's really more of you know yakitori and other skewers from Japan. So with that said, um, really we just wanted to analyze Turks also from you know a consumer mindset. So. Once we research, we did the research, we saw that, you know, it was also a building brand back in 2007. And really, parang what made it so su super successful aside from, you know, having Piolo as one of their main brand endorsers is that it's very affordable. And talagang it's a really good, perfect uh, meal replacement. So if you wanted to have a snack, but then, you know, medyo sawakana with the usual fast food, then you try uh, shawarma from Turks. So really, it also had a very broad market. So it stretches from 8D. 
in that it was also riding on crowd uh, drawer celebrities like Yolo Pascual. So there, um, we also tried to analyze also parang their business model, their business goals. So really, it was more about the franchising models na they started with 52 branches, but now they have over 498. 498 branches nationwide. So you can really see that, you know, all you need is just one good idea and then turn it into a franchising successful model um, just to really test out whether there's a feasibility in terms of creating a brand concept like Tori Q here in Metro Manila. So in terms of just simplifying our overall strategy for it, we just wanted to brand it as simply, you know, you can look at it as a Japanese tricks. Right, our, our Japanese version of tricks. Um, so really, um, going back to the brand, it's all about selling Japanese yakitori and bento boxes. Na same, it's offering delicious, accessible, value for money lunch meal for you know office workers or even family whenever they want to be more experimental when it comes to their snacking. So here we also just flesh out what would be the reasons to believe, the values and personality, the benefits. But all in all, the essence would be traditionally Japanese, but it perfectly captures the Filipino palate. So because of the 30-hour marinades, it's very good um, service. It's really reliably affordable. It's satisfyingly filling, and it's consistently authentic. So with that said, um, we just wanted to list down what would be the three things that we want the consumers to remember us by. So in terms of you know simplifying your unique selling proposition, um, one um, thing that we usually do, Denise, would be Let's list down the three things that we want to be known as. So the three things would be for this um, brand would be number one, really delicious marinades because you know Filipinos really love um, you know different kinds of marinades and mixing and matching. And then number two, um, shempre manaaliw rin the way we cook it. So we want it to be known as fast, automatic with our unique grillers. And then three, um, we want it to be just a genuine, authentic, delicious, and value for money bento boxes. So here, um, just to really flesh out the brand, as a sample menus and even bento bowls. Para lang alam natin ko ano yung mga binibenta namin. So para chicken, chicken skins, chicken wings, and then for bento you'll have you know a combination of both, and then partnered with pure Japanese rice bowls. So all in all, that is the brand. So again, the reason why we also made sure to really flesh out the brand is that the very first important key takeaway that we wanted also. Uh, that everyone wants to do is that before you start anything, before you start thinking about social media or before you start thinking about metrics, ang pinaka importante talaga in order to be a successful brand is that you really ha should have strong roots. Dapat kilalang kilala nyo yung brand nyo, dapat alam nyo kung ano yung gusto nyo mangyari dun, ano yung business goals nyo, ano yung mga social goals nyo, and then what sets you apart, what's the something unique that you have to offer, and that you really have to take the time to really flesh it out. Like, bakit maniniwala sa inyo mga tao, ano yung mga hero products nyo, ano yung mga strategies na gusto nyo ipush. And after clear na kayo dun, that's when you then go apply the theories that we're gonna be discussing today. So that's number one, how do we actually talk about our brand? And then number two, how do we assess kung tama ba the way we're talking about the brand? But again, it all boils down to number one, kilalang kilala nyo ba yung brand nyo? And then number two, do you really genuinely believe that it will work in terms of your target market? So with that said, um, let's now go and apply the second module. So again, the second module, just like what Denise mentioned, was establishing strong social media presence. But to simplify that, really, the reason why you do all of those theories is that you just want to answer this one simple question. So what would be your content pocket? So again, going back to the checklist that um, we've made earlier. So later, um, we're hoping that you can also share about your business. Um, but the, sec the main question that we also was hoping to get from um, the viewers now would be, what would be your content pocket? So right now, let's do a step-by-step -step process on para how do you actually start thinking about ano ba yung mga content buckets na pwede natin gawin? So again, um, going back to um, the refresher, so there's a lot of content na hindi tayo talaga mauubusan. So you'll have your educational content that explains, you'll have your entertaining content na nagpapatawa sa mga tao na gusto nilang i-share. And then syempre, you'll have your promotional content that you know people would share, um, would love to share because may deal. So syempre, like particularly this year, sobrang patok yung mga double day sale na parang pag- 5, 5, 6, 6, 11, 11, 12, 12. Everyone's just going through Lazada and everything. So that's also the reason why it's super important to really promotional content. But in order to simplify this, and in order to simplify social media in general, 
really, um, let's not be intimidated. When in fact, it's just going to be, you should just think of it as if social media management is just like convincing someone personally to try out your brand. So in my lens, given that I just introduced StoryQ to you, then um, you can really think about it in three, um, in a funnel. So my top funnel ka, my middle funnel, and then bottom funnel. That no matter who your target market is, at one point in their lives, mapupunta rin sila dun sa three stages na yon. So at your top funnel, you'll have people who are not aware. Meaning, these are the people that you know have you know never considered ordering Japanese yakitori sticks uh, ever in their life. So for those kinds of people, the thing that we have to do is that we have to make sure na we get their interest so that they want to know more about not just us as a brand, pero just, you know, skewers in general. And then number two, so bababa sila dun sa funnel. So from not knowing us, okay, alam na nila na may skewer. And then nasa second stage na sila, so middle funnel. So people who know about us. So people who know about Tori Q as a, you know, yakitori brand. So now for those people that know us, we have to entertain them. We have to engage with them. We have to start a conversation with them. Para hindi lang nila tayo kakilala, pero gusto talaga nilang, you know, uh, mag-order sa atin kasi very accommodating tayo sa social media. And then finally, for those na, you know, dahil nakausap na natin sila, dahil na-entertain sila sa posts natin, dahil natatakam sila dun sa mga food photos natin, now they're considering to buy. So the final bottom funnel is that, for the people na they really know your brand or really know about your SME or really know about your project, syempre, meron kang desired call to action. So now, we have to entice them. We have to lessen the barriers. So for in our case, given that we're starting food business, sort of, then you, what you want to do is for them to finally order. So to make sure na, you know, we're hitting everyone, no matter whether they don't know about Japanese skewers, whether they know about the brand, or even takam na takam na sila to order, what you have to make sure is that every level of awareness, meron tayong content bucket. So for us, para lang malinis, in a 9 by 9 grid, you can think of it nga as three content buckets for people who are problem unaware, meaning um, for the people na hindi pa sila sure kung if they really want Japanese street food, right? And then some middle funnel for the people na, okay, they want to order street food Japanese snacks, but they don't know where. And then finally, benefit unaware. So they know of Tori Q, but then they're not really sure whether they're going to buy it. So generally, in terms of social media management, the best practice is we post frequently. So ideally, it takes around Mosguro once every two days. And then dapat diversified. Kasi syempre, kung paulit-ulit na lang, or ano, nakakasawa rin tingnan. So... So the reason why we want to create these nine content buckets um, targeting different kinds of people is that as long as meron ka nitong nine na to, sure ka na no matter kung sino yung makakita nun, at one point, ma- makakapture mo yung interest nila. So um, right now, we're gonna be taking a deep dive for each content bucket. So let's start muna dun sa top funnel. So Tori Q101. So what do you mean by Tori Q101? So Basically, in terms of the people who don't know about us, the very first thing that we have to do is actually start with educational content. So, especially now sa pandemic, nakikita naman natin na even the bigger brands, they really take the time to uh, um, talk about their different kinds of ser- services. So, number one, yung mga step-by-step directions kung paano mag-order sa kanila through Viber ba and everything. And then two, telling people na may curbside pickup, full menus, Ano yung mga modes of payment? Pwede bang cash on delivery? Pwede bang grab? Etc. And even sa location. So, on the left, you can see some pegs. Uh, um, uh, you'll have no-nos na parang talking about their Viber community. You'll see contis saying na, oh, we're present in grab food. Um, and then, na available sila not only sa grab food but even sa curbside pickup. So in the same way, um, these are on the right. Naman, are some things that our brand could do. Now, number one, it's good na we're saying open for takeaway style, and then two, that we also deliver straight to their doorstep. So that content bucket is all about education. So Tori Q101. So for the people who don't know then we just want to make sure na lahat ng information na kailangan nila, inuunahan na natin sila. So parang, yung, alam mo yung mga questions na, uh, may delivery po ba kayo? Then dapat, meron na tayong content na, oh yes, may free delivery kami. Or parang, ano po, uh, pwede po bang cash on delivery? Then yes, meron rin. So, in Tori Q101, for this content bucket, 
it's all about anticipating ano yung mga questions sa mga tao and then answering them immediately. Para syempre, even if they don't know about our brand, when they see our post, so that's for Tori Q101. Moving on to the next content pocket. So, the second one would be Japanese street food culture. So, again, given that, you know, we're an international brand, I think in terms of the snacking category, we really want to embrace na, you know, we're, we know about Japanese culture and authentic yung mga pagkain na we're, submit, um, na we're serving. So, here, we just wanted to include some shots on Parang ano ba yung itsura ng mga yakitori grills in Japan or even the street food or even the chef. And then yung mga imagery, you can really see or you can, parang isang tingin pa lang, alam mo na na. Okay, so we just encountered a bit of a technical difficulty on the end of, on the side of uh, Adrian and Denise. Um, sige, uh, we can wait for them to go online. But uh, before that, no, I just like to share on a personal note na ang galing-galing po nila. At uh, <laughs> feeling ko, uh, ang generation na po talaga nila ngayon ay mukhang on the digital platform na. No? Um, ibang klase. <laughs> so, ayan. So, um, Adrian, Denise, are you Hi. guys already here? Ayan. Ayan. Sige. Yeah, no, okay lang. Uh, no, no, wala. Um, yeah, so I'll just share the screen yeah. All right. So, Nagtumbling muna ako, Adrian. Ayan, go ka na. Game. Thank you so much, Edna. So, yun. Um, is this the last slide? Or was it this one? Uh, um, we're, Before, sure yeah. We were. That's the last slide. Okay. Yeah. So, here, um, just to make sure, um, just to quickly summarize rin, um, this content bucket. So, Tori Q101 is all about explaining lang ano yung mga things that people should know when it comes to, you know, your brand. So, ano yung mga common questions nila? And then, dapat make, make sure na you create content that answers it. So, syempre, as a food, food brand, you want to make sure na alam nila na, na open ka for takeaway or that you deliver for um to their doorstep. So, those are things na you can take into account in terms of this content bucket. Moving on, sa second content bucket. So, I think this is... um. <laughs> So, so this one, again, going back to what we want to be known as, gusto natin authentic Japanese skewers yung pagkakalala sa atin. So because of that, one of our content buckets is that gusto natin i-highlight yung Japanese street food culture. So that marata kami mga tao na, wow, ang ganda pala ng um, street food sa Japan, so I really want to try it. And then, dahil nakikita nila yun sa feed natin, pagkakita nila, marilize nila na, oh wow, authentic pala yung mga binibenta nilang skewers dito. So you can see na yung imagery natin parang sobrang nakakat um, uh, mga Japanese food stores, ano yung mga yakitori bars sa Japan. And then even yung imagery na we use parang very Japanese. So even yung mga even teaching Japanese words when it comes to celebrating the new year and the like. So basically for this content bucket, ang simple uh, purpose lang niya is that gusto natin mag come off as authentic tayo when it comes to uh, the food that we're offering. The third... Um, you can see rin naman that in terms of the branding. So if you notice this weird squiggly line, this is actually the picture ng logo ng Toriki in abroad. And then you can see na parang very cute si siya and parang meron siyang mascot. So given na medyo text heavy and very educational yung top panel natin, we also want to build on, on how cute the brand is. So meron silang mascot. Ang pangalan niya si Tori-chan. So just um, given na kware, going back and taking a step back, di ba parang... If you treat your brand as a person, you don't want to talk to a person na parang nagbebenta na nagbebenta sa iyo. Gusto mo nakikipag-usap ka rin sa isang tao na nagpapatawa sa iyo or that alam mo yun, nagba-brighten up ng uh, ng day mo. So, for this content bucket, ang gusto natin is that we're a constant source of positive positivity. So, dahil very cute si naman yung mascot natin, then ito yung mga kinds of content bucket na we can do. So, parang very um example nito rin, other brands that actually apply this also would be sa potato corner whenever they're celebrating a holiday or even using the word shock in their messaging. Talagang obvious na matatawa yung mga tao and nakakutan sila dun sa brand. Even Tokyo Bubble Tea, mayroon sila mga cute bublets na even if they're talking about their services, parang ang cute lang niya tingnan kasi they effectively use their mascots. So in the same way, um, 
in terms of parang creating a persona for us, para it's just good to have a content bucket that revolves around our cuteness. Para ang association sa atin ng mga tao, hindi lang tayo nagbebenta, pero nakakatawa and cute na brand rin tayo. So those are our three first three content buckets. So moving on, for the people naman, so now um, going back to parang why would people buy from us? Since we're in the food industry or the one that our case study, lifestyle shots are, are of our menu would be one of the greatest investments. So this could make or break whether people would want to order from us. So again, going back from personal experience, syempre, now in Facebook, ang dami-dami nang nagpo-post, ang dami-dami nang mga tweets, and ang dami-dami nang you know, IG stories and everything. Uh, what you have to think about is what would make them stop scrolling and really want to look at your product. And one of the good things about it is that if you're selling a product or a service, it's all about lifestyle shots. So yung mga nakakatakam and hero shots. So as you can see, the purpose of this is that isang tingin pa lang nila, then ideally, hopefully, matatakam sila to try these yakitori sticks. So as you can see, aside from being lifestyle shots, nag experiment rin tayo on parang paano natin pinipicturean. So on the top right, nakikita nyo parang super hyper-focused na naka-blur yung background para makikita mo talaga kung ano yung mga toppings. And then dun sa top middle, makikita mo yung different kinds of flavors nila in different plates. And then on the parang bottom row and then second bottom row, um, naglalagay sila ng mga artistic um, names so that you'd all already see na ah, ito pala yung uh, sumire or that you can order it now through their free delivery. So um, you can see that we also try to play around para hindi boring yung lifestyle shot. So light versus dark with text versus not text. So even in um, content buckets, when it comes to parang applying it, make sure na may variety ka rin within that um, content bucket. So next, um, for the fifth, um, again, going back, we also want to be known as a Japanese street food expert. So aside from food, um, we need to highlight our unique selling uh, position. So diba, going back to what I said, we want to be known about three things. That number one, we have our 30-hour marinade sauce. Number two, we have this cute grill. And then number three, that super affordable salmon. And that, um, so imagery that we can use would be, syempre, um, the marinade sauce. Now we use the griller and even some of our, you know, Japanese um, um, chefs that create the sauce and whatever. But another thing to um, take note is that when it comes to the Filipino culture, super important rin to brand ourselves, particularly if you're service, if you're very hospitable. So not even, even though you're in the food industry, super important that you highlight how happy and how approachable and how hospitable you want to serve them. So those are the things that we have to keep in mind when it comes to you know, talking more about your service and your product. For the six, um, really, again, going back, given the food industry, um, it's also about making sure na makikita ng mga tao ano yung end result. So if, if it's food, then it has to be happy people snacking. If it's a product, like for example, for cats or whatever, then it's a cat owner being in love, um, playing with, it, with their um, cat. So really, it's all about trying to see the end result or how would it make your customers happy. So here... You can see na, you know, it's a mix of people. So um, be happy. So it's a kid, a guy, and even, you know. So usually may mix yan. So for the parang more sophisticated brands, they even partner with mga nano influencers. Or even if kayo, if may kamag-ana kayo, then you just ask them to actually take a fo photo with your product or your service. And then to, um, and then another thing that you can consider is like cute kids, because usually if targeted yung brand new to families, then usually cute photos of kids um, really work. And then um, finally, for the last two, then very simple, syempre, for the people who love shopping sa Lazada or Shopee, syempre, di ba, bago kayo mag-try, gusto nyo may reviews na. So here are some imagery na hindi lang siya text, meron pa siyang usually nakakabit na five star para lang alam mo ng mga tao na wow, cool pala to, parang may actual photo ng tao with the five star and their actual recommendation. So at the end of the day, we want na authentic naman talaga yung nagugustuhan sila ng customers natin. And then aside from that, kung parang feature kayo sa local news or even sa isang blog, then take a screenshot lang and then lagay nyo lang yung product nyo. Para lang, you know, maganda rin na everyone's raving about it. And then, finally, promos. So, syempre, again, going back to um, our mindset, um, here's just some promos para lang mabentahan sila. So, again, taking a step back, ito ulit yung nine photos. So, we've discussed all nine. 
And then you can see na strategic sila. Na yung first three was all about targeting people na, you know, might not be into yakitori. The second part, the second one is, okay, get sa nila na there's this brand called Tori Q. But then, bakit sila may entice to order from us? And then finally, three, for those that really have engaged with us, paano natin sila may entice to order? Um, those are the things. So now, the key is, okay, may nine ka na. Siyempre, imimix up mo siya when you communicate it to people. So given this nine, ito yung parang magiging itsura ng sample feed natin. So now, when people look at our, parang, for example, IG or FB, uh, makikita nila na, okay, educational yung sa taas na, okay, open siya for takeaway. It's all about Japanese street food. And that, oh, ang cute, parang meron silang mascot that tells them na free delivery. And then, wow, parang ang ganda nung mga skewers nila. And then you can see na, you know, they're really serving a lot of happy people. And then, um, yun, kakulitan. So here, a picture of people to her. fighting over the food. So makikita mo talaga na, you know, a lot of people are crazy about it. And then finally, um, ending with reviews and even a buy one, get one going. So, see, maganda yung pag nag-mix siya kasi parang may makikita kang buy one, get one. Tapos sabihin mo, oh, sulit kaya to? And then makakabasa ka ng review and then makikita mo na nagagawa ng mga tao. By seeing all of these content together, then may entice sila to actually um, do um, what we want. Which is in this case, since we're a food brand, to order from us. So that ends the first module. So the first module was all about creating content buckets. So again, it all starts with a strong brand identity. Second part is all about um, um, creating the content so that we can effectively communicate um, our brand identity. And finally, is evaluating effectiveness of social media performance. So again, here, ang relevant questions would be, who are your competitors and what metrics will we be using? So going back again to what Denise uh, mentioned uh, all and all, usually may four kang set of metrics. So you'll have your awareness, engagement, conversions, and consumer affinity. But for this one, since we understand that not all of us naman is really more on conversions, it's more about awareness and engagement, what we're going to be talking about. And then just a caveat. So we just wanted to use tricks as a benchmark, but all the figures are all hypothetical. So we just um, made a bunch of numbers so that lang we can explain where you can find them, and then ano yung parang mga simple equations that you can do to arrive with certain metrics. So um, again, analyzing your competitor, in terms of awareness metrics and engagement metrics, these are the things that usually gusto mong malaman. And then maganda, gumawa ka ng Excel sheet on. So number one, ilan ba yung followers nila? Every month, gano'ng ka taas yung tinataas ng followers nila and everything. Number two, gano'ng ka haba yung, uh, gano'ng kalaki yung monthly reach nila? And then per post, gano'ng ka dami yung reach per post. For engagement, again, same. So monthly muna, overall, ano yung monthly engagement nila? Ano yung engagement nila in the certain post? And then computing, i-compute natin yung engagement rate or engagement rate per post. So again, going back, if you want other metrics or other sample computations, we've already provided them in the module rin na we sent over um, to you. So for, again, so going to Turks, so let's try to figure out those uh, seven metrics. So first, followers. So followers, super dali lang. So search search them on Facebook, search them on Instagram. Or if you're doing it for yourself, then basically search yourself lang um, for um, Instagram and, follow, uh, and Facebook. And then you'll see, okay, so Turks, we have 13,400 followers. And then so Facebook, they have 937,444. So for this sake, uh, let's take muna with Facebook. So for followers, alam na natin. So first metric done. Followers nila, 937,444. Now, ito, um, next would be yung reach mo in engagement. So, um, yung thing to note here is that if you don't own um, the brand or the Facebook, then you wouldn't be able to have this tab dun sa manage page. But if you're a Facebook owner or of that brand, then dito lalabas. So again, going back as a reminder, these are not actual um, stats from tricks. Um, this is just from another Facebook page of um, ours, but we just treat it as if it's like So, lahat ng metrics or reach or engagement, these are just hypothetical numbers. We just wanted to show where you can see it and then how to apply it. So, now for insights. Um, so, basically, when you go to your homepage sa Facebook, merong insights bar on the left, and then basically, hanapin nyo lang yung insights bar. And then from there, sa overview pa lang, dun mo na makuha yung monthly reach mo and monthly engagement. But then, important to note that make sure to check the page summary 
and then click last 28 days. Para lang, it's a month rather than, kasi usually naka-default siya last 7 days. So here, ina-itemize rin naman ni Facebook kung ano yung um, period that to cover. So this one is for March 19 to April 15. So post reach, so 289,961. So monthly reach, alam natin, is 289,961. So monthly reach, again, going back, is the number of people that saw any of your posts. And then moving on to engagement, we can see that it's around 28,000. So here, March 19, same period, 27,000. So around 28,000. So engagement naman means any sort of engagement. Nag-like, nag-comment, nag-share, nag-click ng photo album. Any, any of those are engagement. So 27 engagement. So again, metrics by themselves doesn't really tell you a whole lot. So now we want to... Ang more important metric is engagement rate. So engagement rate means given the number of people na nakakita, ano yung sobrang natuwa na nag-engage sila, nag-like, nag-comment and share. And yun yung binibigay na engagement rate. So basically, the formula would be engagement over reach. So 27 over 289 gives you around 9.6% engagement rate, which you now you can compare with um, industry benchmarks and everything, or even month to month. Na ibig sabihin na pare, last January yung engagement rate lang natin was five percent, but now nine point six percent. Then you know na you're on the right track. So those are some things na you can do. Moving on, pwede mo rin siyang gawin per post. So we just took a sample post from pare with Bea on Turks, and then as an owner, you can actually see rin kung ano yung performance mo on the post. So again, these figures doesn't necessarily correlate um, to the post. But here, ito na yung itsura niya. So now, you can see na here, 9,957 9, people reach. So obviously, for this post, um, yung post niya is 9,000. And then here, you just add 4,618 na comments, shares, and then 299 na clicks, which will give you 4,970, which will give you their... Day, um, um, engagement rate for this post at 49.30%. So, bakit important na per post and per month? Because by ha by knowing na yung monthly mo is 9.6, then you can now compare your per post performance. Na, for example, for this creative, hypothetically, given na my 49% engagement rate siya, then you know na maganda siyang post. And then, uulitin mo siya, pero in a different kind of way. Pero, let's do a counter example na for example, yung engagement rate niya was 1%. E alam mo na yung monthly engagement rate was 9.6%. Ang ibig sabihin nun na mababa, pangit yung post kasi 1% yun. Ang ibig sabihin nun, you have to analyze bakit hindi siya pumato dun sa market. So those are some of the metrics lang. So now we've completed it. So you have your awareness metrics and your engagement metrics. And then, you can do this month on month para makikita niyo yung growth niyo per reach, per engagement, para lang may benchmarks kayo on how to, you know, make your brand and storytelling. So, that's it from our end. Um, so, again, going back is to just make sure now we're on the right track. These are just some of the questions that you can ask. So, again, what's your business is all about content buckets. It is all about metrics. So, um, thank you very much. So um, right now, it's um, 2.11. So since we don't have much time, maybe you can start Muna with Q&A if people have any questions. Yeah. Yes, so thank you for that, Adrian. No, um, ang rich nung lecture nyo. I am, uh, I am having fun listening to both of you. And thank you for that. So um, we now open the floor. Uh, to the, our participants uh, for your questions. Do you have any questions for Adrian and Denise? Napakaganda nung kanilang lecture. It's so concise and comprehensive. I'm, uh, wow, I'm floored. Hi, I have a question. Sorry. Okay, so Ms. Jerby from Catty Corn Dream. Sige, if, um, kung yung mga tanong, you can raise hand. Ah. Gawa tayong raise hand. Ano. Yes, Ms. Jerby, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I noticed kanina in the presentation, one of the parang place that was noted for um, the Sayakitori is not, um, not food court, but somewhere close to it. I wanted to understand, Sano, what's the reason behind bakit not food court, but somewhere close to it? 
Okay, yeah. So in terms of the food court, we just wanted to make sure that it stands out the brand. So um, like when you, going back to our aspirational brand, like for example, Turks, we noticed that okay, may some stalls in the food court, but there are also some in the middle of the street or even in the middle of the mall. Na parang hindi na lang sila nawawala amid kasi pag bumata sa food court kahit na bumalik ka parang hindi mo maalala which stall it is so parang we just wanted it was just a small strategic decision na um de, let's just make sure na may separate stalls tayo parang hindi tayo uh, parang maalala pa rin tayo ng mga tao pero again parang hypothetical strategy lang rin naman yeah thank you thank you thank you Ms. Jerby for the question other questions from the floor and also, you can type in your questions in the chat box. Um, sige, do we have any yeah, questions? Yes. Um, kanina pala, no? Adrian and Denise talked about lifestyle photography. So good news. Uh, we have a topic today on basic photography uh, by Ms. Pau Guevara. So tamang tama yung sinabi nila, na, nila Adrian and Denise na very important ang lifestyle shots so our next speaker is uh, an expert on that. Huh? So great, great we have that. Okay. Hey, comment lang. Ha? May na si Miss Siwit ba to? Hi, I'm with. Yes, ah, si yeah. Isabel. <laughs> I wasn't able to okay. see. Okay. Yes, ma'am with. Uh, I won't turn on my ano, video, but you know I was really it was really great for one. I mean, you guys, I want to tell you what I chatted with uh, Edna na I've attended so many digital marketing, uh, virtual marketing ano, uh, webinars, but by far, yours is the best. I mean, you really put your thoughts very short, very concise. You had very great examples also. But uh, I'm happy to know, to actually learn that yung palang mix na yan is actually called a bucket. Because uh, actually, last night, my daughter and my son were brainstorming about yung digital ano, uh, calendar. And because I didn't know it was a bucket, so we we actually parang kind of drew a tree and then the main trunk of the tree was going to be our about us and our unique selling propositions. And then the secondary branches would be ano, uh, yung source namin, yung process namin, and then our target market, our community, and probably the seasons. Pero yung ginawa yung ano, mix of about being educational, being interactive. I think that one is a more generic no, na, na approach, which I think I can now change our uh, bucket and our mix so that we can follow yours. And then yung source, yung process, yung communities that we work with, and even the seasons can actually, pwedeng pumasok dun sa general uh, ano, main themes na ano nyo, like interactive education and the like. So, I'm really just, you know, that's my biggest takeaway because we've been say we've been asking ourselves as a business na, you know, how do we ano? Wala akong question actually. I, it was just a comment. How do we put together this mix? Yon. So thank you for that ano. Thank you for that. Thank you so thank much for. Thank you, Miss Wit. Um, so sa ating chat box no. Si Ms. Elaine, yung kanyang question is, do you suggest boosting ads and how much is a reasonable budget to begin with? Yeah, so in terms of boosting ads, um, <clears throat> there's actually two ways um, to go about it. So the more popular one would be, <clears throat> the more popular one would be to boost it um, sa Facebook and sa Instagram. So I, I think whenever you post, there's also a boost now button. But then I think, the question would be, um, what is the purpose of you boosting it? So <clears throat> I see a lot of um, um, clients na basically medyo ang gusto nila i-boost para mga like campaigns, para marami, para marami mag-like. Pero per, um, personally, parang I don't advise for it kasi parang it's just really a vanity metric when it comes to parang followers. Kind of. But hypothetically, kware, going back to Tori Q, let's say may promo kami. So we have a promo. And then um, what we do is we um, boost that post. And then, um, syempre, the next question would be, what would be the call to action? So for example, the purpose of boosting is that I want to get orders. So very revenue-centric. 
So I think a good small part figure is like, for example, um, we have a buy one, take one promo. We can start with just a little as 1,000 pesos um, for around three to five days. And then you assess. Because there's a feature in Facebook that you can actually assess how many people click, how many people, how much revenue you're able to generate. So for example, my 1,000 ako, and then let's say around 1,000 people click. So if I'm happy with that number na, ah, okay, one peso for everyone, one, every peso I spend, my isang click. If I'm happy with that, then go, then you can just continue doing it. And then in terms of the revenue, let's say 800 pesos yung kinita ko versus 1,000, parang medyo lugi. So basically, parang hindi mo na siya itutuloy. But then let's say, ah, nag-spend ako ng 1,000, tapos 3,000 pesos worth of orders yung nakuha namin. Since parang tumubo ka ng around 3 every time you spend 1,000, then you can adjust your budget accordingly. Na, okay, sige, next round, tingnan natin kung gagana siya 2,000. Ganun. So basically, I think around 1,000 to just test kung it's uh, approaching the kind of metrics na you want. And then from there, you can just adjust up, adjust down, depending kung ano uh, yeah. I hope that was able to answer the question. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Ang sabi ni Ms. Elaine, many thanks. I have boost promos lang as well for now. So we have another question from Ms. Niha of Shine and Sparkle. Uh, for a small and new business, is it advisable to have a website already? Ito, personally, if you're a small business pa lang, um, I wouldn't call it like a mandatory. A lot of small businesses nowadays, they they're able to survive and really get a lot of revenue from Instagram and Facebook alone. Um, and for for me, like a website kasi can serve many different purposes. So um, it could be an avenue for your brand um, for them. Parang a good landing page to tell people about your brand. So yan yung mga about us um, portions. Um, it could also be an e-commerce website. So yan, um, for you to sell. Um, but then if you're a small business and parang you're seeing that you're thriving very well on Instagram, Facebook alone, then you can stick to that. Um, if you're growing and you're seeing that it's quite difficult not to keep track of your orders, you can do a, you can make a Shopify website. Because yeah. a Shopify um, website, yeah. um, the main uh, the main perk of it is very organized na yung system. You'll see na the number of orders and then that in yung um, customer information. So, but if you're managing well naman, um, currently, okay na yung Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And actually, to build on parang business insights, actually, we super agree with what she said. Um, In terms of parang nag-analyze rin kasi kami kung ano yung mga trends that's super popular in 2020, 2021. And one of the growing trends is something called conversational commerce. So I think personally, we actually experienced this. Na kami ni Denise, rather than going to Lazada or Shopee, sometimes we just search a marketplace. Or even parang, oh may pool ka nakikita sa Facebook, Instagram, then straight to PM or straight to DM. And those things really work as long as you make sure na sobrang nag invest kayo on community management. So for me, rather than parang going to a website, yung mga na naaalala kong purchases or mas naaalala kong brands are the ones na pagka-message ko sa kanila, Sobrang haba nila mag-reply. And then every time na may question ako, they're very dynamic when it comes to answering that. And then agree with what Denise said that it's only siguro when hindi na siya manageable or parang meron kang branding purpose or social proofing na you want to do. Kaya you'd have a website. But definitely, you can just be as profitable if you just make sure of marketplace, shopping, uh, FB shop, and everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um napaka rich ng discussion perhaps we have a uh, room for one more or one or two more questions may nakalagay pala ditong comment sa ating facebook is uh, number 1 is how to be you po <laughs> so meron tayong audience na natuwa no how to be you uh, this is really helpful uh, my comment very informative and also ang galing so nakakatuwa no marami tayong audience na natuwa Sa inyong presentation. So, other burning questions from our participants. Ako rin, ang dami ko rin gustong tanongin, but uh, feeling ko ma um, makikita natin ito sa ating Canvas platform. no. So, our participants are all, hopefully, you guys and girls are enrolled in our 
um, Canvas platform for the Live Local PH. So naka-upload po itong kanilang presentation and they also have a recording. So if you can visit that and, you know, relive the beauty of this presentation and the content, then that will be great. So any more questions from Shine and Sparkle? Thank you for the answer. We will take your advice. Ang galing ng discussion. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I agree. Um, it's my question yes. ako, uh, for yes. Yes. and Denise. Um, so like so a lot of a lot of the audience are small business owners no and they're starting pa lang. So in terms of like um ano yung like usual timeline or like duration for you to be able to establish or like achieve na yung ano yung certain level of online presence na kinala ka na ng mga tao in terms of your experience. Ah okay. Um in terms of my personal experience. So first nail wife, it's a skincare brand. Um, that we brought here to the Philippines from Thailand. Um, I think it took us a year, pero I don't think kasi parang there's a certain timeline or deadline. Sometimes it takes several years then, um, and it's a lot of moving parts then. So, syempre, um, one year lang because we had uh, a celebrity endorser, nag, 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 we also contact influencers to post our products, um, we're also on Lazada and Shopee. So um, those things also contributed to a really strong social media presence. But then for me, don't get pressured if you feel like, I can't pa lang followers ko, ganon. Don't, be, don't feel pressured. It's okay. It takes time. And it takes a lot of resources. And at the end of the day, I think um, content is king and customer service is queen. So you also have to really give a good customer experience to your customers. So if they remember that, they'll always keep buying. They'll also be, they'll also um, recommend you again. So it's okay, take your time. As long as you feel like you're touching all bases and you're investing naman in your cost in your customer experience, you'd, you'd, you'd reach that now. So ano talaga, no? quality over quantity yeah. of followers. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that question. Another one from Mamwit. Um, how many times can we recycle a post that performed well? Yeah. So actually, that's a pretty good question. So honestly, whenever we work in marketing, sometimes we put in love kami sa post namin. And then, you know, it does really well. And then parang you're running out of ideas. So for me, very practical would be, um, I think if you have a successful post, kaya binus niya na siya. And then you plan to boost it again. You can just basically boost the same and then just pin it on Facebook para you don't post twice. So basically, para lang, ang maganda dun is that, para, for example, um, today, nag-boost ako ng post about skewers na promo na buy one, get one. And then, um, I got like a thousand likes. And then, I unpin it. And then, but, syempre, malulunod na ulit siya. And then, what if I have the same mechanic na buy one, get one? And then, I basically want to use it again. So basically, I'll boost the same post and then pin it. And then, even though parang a month ago na siya, as long as hindi ko pinalitan yung copy, nandun pa rin yung 1,000 likes. So now, my 1,000 likes becomes 2,000 likes. So it cannot be parang promo rin, other visuals rin. But then if it's an actual duplication, then um, as in literally reposting it, then siguro you can just wait around mga 15 to 20 posts para hindi rin naman maganda na parang when they scroll down, it's the same. And then, sorry, last point would be, um, there's also a feature called dark post. So, I super encourage people in terms of very um, sa sales centric to look into talagang Facebook ads manager, how to run ads. Because usually you have your feed and then you have your ads. And then those ads, you have a choice whether you want it featured on your feed or yung mga nakakakita lang nun are the people that your ads are serving. So those are another parang very lengthy discussion, but those are alternatives to um, that question. Yeah, I hope that was able to uh, clarify that point. Thank you. Um, siguro ako rin may question. Um, effective, ah, well, hindi naman sa effective eh. Parang tipong, where, where in my business phase or parang process can I actually use influencers? Um, you know, kasi syempre kasi when, I, when I'm going to contract influencers, I have to give free products, diba? Is it good to have them initially at the start of building my business? 
or mid gamer ba sila or parang you know where where do they come in yung most effective time that i can um uh contract social media influencers yeah um for me and based on my experience parang it always works well to have them at the start um so they really kasi help build um they help build like your brand already. So parang, um, it's also called social proofing. So if people see na, ah, okay, they're already um, content creators, key opinion leaders who are using it, uh, start pa lang, unfamiliar pa lang yung brand to them. Then that's where, um, then they might be convinced to try your product. And for me, um, mga influencers, they're ano eh, part of awareness objective. So they're really there to make sure that more people see or hear about your product. And if you're a starting brand, if you're a, a beginner brand, you really need as much awareness as you can to start pa lang. And then, saka ka mag-focus on converting them um, down the line through other ways, through, um, let's say, promotions or deals or yeah. um, good reviews from your customers. So Yeah. And then, uh, parang, just to give also a practical example. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one of the new clients now we were able to have the opportunity to actually um, learn from Ren would be um, her friend's dad's business. So, San Los Alabad. So, I feel like they really do well when it comes to influencer marketing in such a way that ako rin kasi hindi ako, hindi ko expertise influencer marketing. But then I realized that you know, influencer marketing is all about, just, you can even just tap your friends, you can just even tap your target market. And then, ang nagbo-boom kasing trend rin ngayon is what you call user-generated content wherein you encourage your customers to submit their photo, their submit their reviews, and then you even post it on your feed. Kasi um, right now, nakakasawa na to siya brand. Uh, you know, sobrang, ang, ar, parang sobrang alam mong philotoshop lang yung mga post ganun. Pero pag nakakita ka ng actual photo of a customer na sobrang, you know, not as um, professionally made, pero alam mo talagang bumili siya, mas maingganyo ka pa. So for me, um, for those who are intimidated about budget or parang looking to parang get, getting parang really popular TikTok stars, you can even start with your friends, you can even start with your family. Okay. So, um, sorry, last follow-up question on that, no? If I had, sabi mo nga, certain budget, if I were, kunwari, meron lang akong X amount of budget, if I were to choose, which do you think is more effective, boosting a post or giving products to a social media influencer or an influencer and then siya na yung gumawa ng parang post about the product? If I were to choose between the two, which is more effective, do you think, to t- let my product to take off? If you are constrained with budget, I'm actually leaning towards um, paid ads. If if your if your goal is to convert ka agad to get the return on your investment immediately, I do paid ads. But if you're willing to wait long term for you to, because influencer marketing it sure takes a few months or a few um for it to kick in the effect of it. If you can wait that long, it's brand building rin naman. So. Um, it could also pay off in the future. Pero if you want, if you have an immediate promo, you want sales today, then I'd go for paid ads. Yeah, actually, that's a very good question, Miss Ed. I, I honestly don't know the right answer. That I, I tend to agree with Denise, pero I think it's also good to mention that whenever you're faced with those two good opportunities, we, we'd love to encourage everyone here to actually split test these initiatives. So for example, you have 1,000 then just try to do it 500 ibubus ko tong post na to and then 500 papa bibigay ko sa isang friend ko so there's actually a lot of perks like quite boosting pag sobrang broad naman okay marami kang likes pero walang nagbenta pero if you right find the right influencer then kahit 500 lang yan then marami so maganda is i-track nyo so run an ad track the results give to an influencer track the results with a parang personalized link parang if ito mas kumita dito then just go with the one that wins. So, in, whenever you're faced with an um, or decision, it's actually good to invest and then learn from it. So, that's something that um, we can really apply. Rin. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, Miss Jerby from Catticorn Dreams, I would also like to chime in something to Ed's question. Ma'am Jerby, go ahead. Hi! So, yeah, to your question, because I would like to share, like, for my brand, for Catacorn Dreams, nabuhay kami talaga, like, in our years of operating, nabuhay kami sa influencer marketing. Um, I guess I was just lucky 
to be friends with them because I am also a blogger. So I know a lot of them personally. And when I started my company, yun lang talaga yung main form of promotion sa amin. Every time, and even up to now, every time I wanted to launch a new product, I just send, I do product seeding to my friends who are also bloggers or YouTubers, and I let them do their thing. So tama yung sinabi ni um, speaker, wait, <laughs> <This week. laughs> yeah. so, na, um, it takes time, especially if it's free. If you're not paying them, wala kang right mag follow up. Yeah. So it takes time, like sometimes six months. But it's okay, because parang you just think of it na parang you're building your brand. But to your question, I also do um Facebook um paid ads for my classes for the workshops. Because parang yun medyo mahirap ibigay ng libre sa mga um, influencer, especially now if it's all online. So, for my classes, we do um, paid ads either on Facebook or Instagram, pero for products, we still do seedings talaga every time we wanted to launch something or you wanted to release a new product. Thank you. Thank you so much for those inputs. Ang galeng. Okay. Um, gusto ko lang din i-highlight, no, na parang we are really moving towards a trend of evidence-based marketing. So Adrian and Denise have highlighted how important um, yung metrics nyo. So um, before, no, parang intuitive, you know, recording lang and all. Pero ngayon kasi madami na tayong available resources online, even the websites themselves, Google, and also the e-commerce website that we are building for for you, for you entrepreneurs, uh, meron ding mga ano, metrics, no, recording of the metrics. So ano na ngayon, data-driven na lahat. So, um, siguro lang din as a reminder na uh, sa mga ating entrepreneurs na we should really get into the thick of this, itong data na to, and how we can use data to thrive in the new normal, to let our businesses um, grow and proliferate. Napakalaking bagay niya. Dati kasi wala niya eh. <laughs> Dati, you know, kahit yung mga simple brick and mortar stores, wala. But now, since everything is going digital, ayan, highlight lang natin yung importance ng uh, data and metrics when you're going to target your audience and also to sell your products. So we have uh, ano, other questions pa po. This is such a very nice topic no, and interesting uh, discussion. Napakaganda at napakagaling ng ating speakers. Sige, any more questions? Again, ito po I uploaded sa ating Canvas platform. You can access it there. And meron ding recorded uh, lecture ang ating speakers, Adrian and Denise. No? And also this um, this Zoom webinar will also be, is recorded and will be uploaded eventually. So may nag-comment about um, prepare, uh, Facebook ads. No? Uh, I think uh, we will have that in our Canvas platform. So it's, it is an asynchronous session, meaning andun siya sa Canvas. <laughs> 